Uh, in this video, I'd like to introduce uh, the historical motivation of why mathematicians started looking at complex numbers. Um, I want to start out by saying that uh, complex numbers have a bad rep. Um, you can tell from the naming, imaginary number i. Uh, it's already suggestive that it doesn't exist. Uh, it's somehow fake. Um, it's a figment of imagination. Maybe it shouldn't be taken seriously. Um, but nothing could be further from the truth. Uh, once we started using them, uh, you, you found numerous uh, non-existent list of applications. Um, you might argue, like, what does it mean for a number to exist? Um, well, I mean, if there are quantities that could be measured by uh, imaginary numbers or complex numbers, maybe you might be convinced uh, that it is something that's real. Um, and such things exist. Uh, electrical engineers use them. Uh, in quantum mechanics, uh, imaginary I is used as part of a very central equation, um, Schrodinger's equation. Um, it could be uh, used in mundane things as a uh, uh, predator prey model in, in uh, biological uh, population studies uh, and so on. Um, it's used in fluid dynamics. Uh, the, the list goes on and on. Um, but I, I like to show uh, what convinced mathematicians that maybe this is something that we should look at. So here we go. Okay. Uh, so remember, uh, imaginary number i is is a square root of negative one. Right? It's it's a number such that when you square it, uh, you'll get a negative number. So uh, let's first look at a uh, quadratic equation. Um, uh, okay. So a uh, quadratic equation could be written as uh, zero equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Um, you could rewrite this though. Um, so you could bring uh, the ax squared term to the other side uh, and then divide by maybe negative a um, and rewrite it so that it looks like x squared, the parabola uh, where it meets uh, some line, mx plus c, right? Um, so maybe I can kind of draw like a line like a mx plus c. Um, and we're looking at solution where this line intersects the parabola, right? So in this picture, there are two solutions. Um, and of course, it's perfectly uh, reasonable to have a situation where line does not hit the parabola at all. Um, but uh, in, in certain conditions, so if you use the quadratic formula, um, this will be the solution where the line meets uh, the parabola. Um, and uh, it turns out that, uh, so this will give you uh, two solutions uh, in, in case it's plus and minus this radical quantity. Um, if uh, this quantity inside of the square root, the m squared plus 4c term, um, if this is negative, so if you have a negative inside of the square root, then uh, there are no real solutions. Um, so we could see that from the picture, um, the parabola doesn't intersect the line. Right? So uh, we could, at this point, try to introduce uh, uh, quote unquote solutions where this line that doesn't hit the parabola uh, somehow intersects this parabola. But you can kind of see from geometric point of view, um, the parabola doesn't intersect the line. So why force some solution to this equation, right? Uh, there's really no strong um, incentive for mathematician to con consider what if uh, square root of negative number made sense here. So uh, 
quadratic equation is not what motivated mathematicians to look at square root of negative numbers. Um, it really was motivated by cubic equations. So uh, let's take up one, one, one power um, and look at cubic equation, x cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. Um, we could do something similar. Uh, so what I want to do is uh, the, the bring the, uh, instead of bringing the x squared term to the other side, uh, what I want to bring is the, the x cubed term to the left-hand side. Um, but before I do that, uh, there's actually a very nice substitution we could do to kind of simplify the equation. So before we um, uh, move the, the x cubed term to the other side, uh, first divide by a. So um, there's, there's no uh, coefficient of the x cubed term. And then um, substitute with u minus b over 3a as, as x. Uh, and then let's see what happens here. Um, so if you substitute in, um, u minus b over 3a in place of x. Uh, this is what we get. Uh, and then it, it gets a little bit messy with the algebra. So you, you can cube and square and uh, expand everything uh, on this line. Um, don't worry too much about individual term. Uh, what I want you to pay attention is the square term. Okay, there's only two terms that has u squared in it. And uh, the substitution was made so that uh, these two coefficients cancel out, right? So the u squared terms disappear uh, with the substitution. And um, the, the rest of the detail, the coefficients, it's not that important, right? All you know is, all you have to pay attention to is there is a u cubed term, right? Um, and you can collect like terms. So these are all the linear terms. Uh, collect them all and you have a coefficient. And there's also three different constant terms. Uh, you can collect them all and call it some constant, right? Um, so uh, after collecting the like terms, um, you're just gonna rewrite the equation in this way. So I brought the UQ to the other side. Um, and the 3P is the coefficient of U you have on the, the right-hand side. And 2Q is the constant term on the right-hand side. So you might be wondering, what is this 3 and 2 that, that appears here? So uh, we're just renaming the coefficient here. So uh, if you collect all the linear terms, you'll have some coefficient. Divide that by 3 and call that p, okay? So that the 3p becomes the new coefficient of u. And uh, whatever uh, the, the constant term adds up to, um, divide that by two and call that q. So that 2q becomes the constant term. We're just artificially dividing by three or two, uh, just so that the next formula becomes a little bit simpler, okay? If you can write down the cubic uh, in this form, then we can actually write down the sol solution to this cubic formula uh, as follows. Okay. So uh, you, the solution to this cubic could be written as cube root of q plus square root of q squared minus p cubed plus cube root of q minus square root of q squared minus p cubed. Okay, so you're probably wondering how did it go from that step to this step? That's in your homework. Okay, so that's the, the fifth problem on the first homework. It will walk, walk you through uh, how you can go from this uh, cubic uh, down to this this solution right there. Um, 
but this solution works. Um, so what I want you to do uh, is pause this video and uh, see if you can do this yourself, trying to plug it in, All right, right? So um, if I give you a cubic uh, in this form, x cubed is equal to six x plus six, uh, notice that there's no quadratic term, there's no x squared term. So uh, you do not have to make that substitution, right? So remember we made this substitution at the beginning to get rid of the, the square term. So if, it's, if it doesn't exist there, uh, you could jump right to the formula. Um, so uh, let's see. The, the coefficient of x is six. So that means p is equal to two. And the constant term is six. So if you divide that by two, uh, q is equal to three. So if you, if you can figure out p and q, uh, you, can, uh, you can type it in um, to this formula and, and get the solution. Okay, all right. So I, I don't know if you if any of you have seen uh, this cubic uh, formula before, um, but this is this is what it is. Um, this formula is uh, sometimes called Cardano's formula uh, after Geronimo Cardano uh, published a book, fifteen forty five, uh, with this formula in it. Um, there's actually a controversy. Uh, associated with this formula. Uh, Cardano is not the one that found the solution to the cubic. Um, so we'll talk about that later, but I don't wanna break the flow. Um, I, wanna, I wanna get to the punchline of why does this formula uh, motivate people to study uh, complex numbers? So, so let me do that first. Okay. So, uh, this motivation was outlined by uh, Raphael Bombelli. Um, so he was using this uh, Cardano's formula. Um, in this particular uh, cubic formula. Okay, so uh, it looks very similar. So uh, for P, we have to divide 15 by three. So P is equal to five. And uh, Q uh, is four divided by two, so uh, it's equal to two, right? So using the formula, uh, Q root of two plus uh, the Q squared, uh, so uh, Q squared, Q is two, so four uh, minus uh, five Q, 125. So four squared minus 125 is going to be uh, negative uh, 121, okay? And uh, the, the second cube root looks, looks very similar, uh, except the plus is replaced with minus there. Okay, so um, when you arrive at this formula, uh, notice that you have like a negative under a square root. And uh, you might at this point say, well, actually this Cardano's formula doesn't work for this case. Um, but uh, Von Belli, uh looked at it a little bit further. Um, so he actually worked out what the, what the cube root was. Um, and uh, I think I'm gonna let you work out the details. Um, but he actually worked out that this cube root of two plus square root of negative 121 uh, could be simplified to two plus the square root of negative one. So this is going to turn into I, but um, square root of negative one there. And cube root of two minus square root of negative 121 uh, simplified down to this. Well, how, how do you determine that this, this is how we simplify? Well, you kind of go backwards. Um, if you take two plus square root of negative one um, and uh, multiply them all out, right? Um, then uh, it simplifies down to two plus 11 uh, times the square root of negative one. Well, 11 is square root of 121. Um, 
So uh, this is exactly what it means to be the Q root of that insight. I hope that makes sense. Um, okay. So what? Um, well, if you simplify it this much, um, we could actually write down the formula. So look, we already have x is equal to that. The first thing is the same thing as two plus square root of negative one. And the second uh, expression could be simplified down to two minus square root of negative one. And conveniently, uh, the imaginary part cancels out. So we actually get a real answer. Um, when I say real, real number answer, um, uh, which is x equals to four, which actually does solve the original uh, cubic equation. <clears throat> so this, this came as a shock um, because this shows that actually Cardano's formula works in more cases than we previously thought. Um, if, if you can make sense of this square root of negative numbers, uh, sometimes it, during the calculation, uh, it might appear, uh, but it might give you the solution to a real problem, problem involving real solutions um, at the end. So um, even if you didn't like to consider uh, imaginary numbers or square root of a negative numbers as a thing, um, it gave you a real motivation that actually it, it gives you solutions uh, to problem that didn't involve uh, complex numbers in the formulation or the solution. It's just a, a, a thing that you go along the way, uh, but it, it comes to a solution that um, uh, mathematicians previously cared about. So uh, this, this should convince you um, that even if you don't like to consider quantities uh, that are imaginary, um, it actually helps you solve problems. Um, so uh, the, the, the thing that you should be thinking right now is can we make sense of this imaginary number, square root of negative one? So we could use this thing to sol solve this problem or maybe uh, others uh, that it solves. Okay, so uh, I hope you're convinced that um, that this is a, is a useful thing. Um, but um, I want to go back to the. I, I just kind of want to gossip about mathematicians. Um, I gave an asterisk on Cardano's formula um, because that's what it's named after. But Cardano is kind of a jerk. Um, so I, I just kind of want to point out what happened there. Um, OK, so let's see. The history of cubic formula. Um, OK, so the first people that we know, uh, first person that we know that solved uh, cubic is I'll probably butcher the name, Asfion del Ferro. Um, and he found a way to solve a cubic formula in a particular situation. Um, not all the cases, but just particular case. <clears throat> uh, one that could be written in this format. Um, and uh, he told his student, Antonio Fiore, uh, but he did not publish uh, his uh, solution. Another person solved the cubic formula, and Niccolo Tataglia um, uh, later solved it. Um, and uh, uh, so, so this is um, uh, Italy in, in uh, 16th century. And um, there's math duels uh, between math professors all the time that's happening. <laughs> So um, Fiore, uh, the, the student of the original cubic solver, uh, challenged Tartaglia 
um, into a math battle um, and then say, hey, uh, I bet you I could solve more cubics than you can, right? So, so what they do uh, is they, they give each other math problem quiz, uh, then give like a time limit of a few days to solve them. Um, so it turned out that uh, Tartaglia had a better grasp on cubics. Um, so uh, Tartaglia was able to solve all the problems Fiore gave, um, but Fiore could only solve few problems that Tartaglia gave, right? So uh, Tartaglia won this math battle. Um, so after that, um, th this doesn't matter in the later, uh, later part, uh, Tataglia uh, shared his secret cubic formula uh, with Geronimo Cardano. So this is where Cardano comes into play. Um, Tataglia shares it, but only under the condition uh, that uh, he would not publish this uh, formula before him. Right, so it's he wanted to get the credit for it. Um, he, he shared it, but he didn't want to. He didn't want uh, Cardano to spread it. <clears throat> so uh, Cardano didn't publish for a few years, actually six years, which is a long time um, to keep a secret like this. Um, but after six years, uh, he stopped waiting for uh, Tartaglia. He just publishes a math book. Um, with this formula inside it. So Cardano justified this um, by saying like he, he became aware uh, that there was somebody else who sold the cubic, um, the Ferro. Um, so uh, Cardano claimed uh, that he did not publish Tartaglia's formula. Uh, he took the Ferro's work and modified it, and then he, he published that. Right, so in Cardano's mind, uh, he justified that uh, he kept his promise. He didn't publish uh, Tartaglia's formula. Uh, did the Del Ferro's work? Um, of course, Tartaglia, Tartaglia was furious. Um, so uh, Tartaglia challenged Cardano uh, into a math duel, um, but Cardano would not accept the, the, the fight. Um, uh, instead, uh, Cardano's student uh, accepted the fight. They have a math battle and Cardano's student won. Um, and you might be wondering like, what's at stake when you have these math battles? Um, they are putting their, uh, their position at these universities online uh, when you do these math battles. So um, Cardano's student won uh, and took Tartaglia's position um, as a math professor. Uh, and uh, Tartaglia lost his job, which sucks. Um, that, that's how he gets repaid, yeah. Anyways, I, I don't know what the, the moral to that story is, but uh, I, I guess one thing that I can point out is that um, the 16th century Italian system did not, uh, so the concept of math duel is awesome to me. That, that, that is exciting, uh, but it comes at the cost of, uh, it stifles innovation, right? These uh, like mathematicians had already solved the cubic for a while, um, but they didn't want to publish it so they could win math battles, which is ridiculous. Um, like, what are, what are you doing if you're not publishing uh, uh, mathematical progress as, as a math professor? It turns out that um, Cardano, uh, was not a math professor. Uh, he did math, uh, definitely, um, but he was also a physician. So he was, uh, he already had income. He didn't really care uh, to hold a math professor position. Um, he just wanted to publish the work and uh, get credit for it. And, and it worked, his name stuck. Um, 
but um, kind of a douche move. Yeah. Um, okay. Anyways, uh, I think I'm going to end the video here. Um, so I'll see you on Thursday.